Thank you, Professor. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. On behalf of the Hong Kong Trade Development Council, welcome to session three of today's Think Asia, Think Hong Kong program. Our focus is technology, specifically Hong Kong as a base for technology companies to expand their business in China. Never have the opportunities been clearer. That's thanks largely to China's 12 five years program approved in March by the National People's Congress. Technology is central to the plan. The goal is to raise mainland manufacturing from low-end processing to a higher end of the value chain. Seven key strategic industries have been named. Four of them are related to technology and the environment. Energy efficiency and environmental protection. New energy, new materials, new energy vehicles, including electric cars. The five years plan set hard targets on energy efficiency, resource conservation and emission targets. Alternative energy use will be promoted by 2015 non-fossil fuel share is expected to take up more than 11% of the country's energy consumption. Biotechnology, another of the plant's key sectors, is also set to benefit from enhanced technological developments. And the mainland's focus on industrial upgrading. To tackle this and other program targets and priorities, the mainland will need to import a great deal of technology. According, according to a recent UN report, it will require more than 60 specialized technologies to contain pollution and achieve real energy saving. Most of that technology is simply not available on the mainland. That's good news for UK companies, especially those that partner with Hong Kong. After all, the five years plan ensures that Hong Kong's economic integration with the mainland will only deepen. Hong Kong Kwangtung Regional Economic Cooperation is part of the plan's regional economic strategy. Hong Kong companies have long experience in technology cooperation with overseas markets. Our world class financial and business services make us an ideal technology technology transfer center in Asia. So too does our strong intellectual properties protection, which offers a favorable business environment for overseas companies that deal with IP. And Hong Kong's proximity to the booming mainland market creates huge demand for overseas IP. In addition, many mainland-based IP owners are looking for IP specialists to help to help them take their business global. Hong Kong is where they turn to, where Chinese companies go out to the world, where foreign capital and exporters look for mainland markets opportunities. Find out more about the IP power of Hong Kong at the Business of Intellectual Properties Asia Forum, organized by TDC and Hong Kong Design Center on December 2nd in Hong Kong. In addition to offering a ready market, Hong Kong can also help connect UK companies with mainland enterprises looking for partners in green manufacturing and distribution as well as biotechnology. We are fortunate to have with us today a wealth of knowledgeable industrial players. They will tell you much more about the promise uh, the promise of technology and China, made possible through Hong Kong. Our keynote speakers are Hong Kong SAR Government Deputy Commissioner for Innovation and Techno Technology, Andrew Lai, and Hong Kong Science and Technology Park, Nicholas Brooks. Mr. Lai and Mr. Brooks will be followed by the heads of two Hong Kong Science and Technology Institutes. Later this afternoon, We'll break into two concurrent sessions 
one centre on green technology and the other on biotechnology. Both will highlight the strength of Hong Kong Science Park and Hong Kong science and technology development in general. Both spell opportunities for you and your China business future. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is my great pleasure to be in London today to share with you the latest development of Hong Kong in the innovation and R&D front. Hong Kong and the United Kingdom had a very special bondage even after the reunifications in 1997. A lot of British systems and culture still have a strong presence in Hong Kong. The British local community has been very active. I really hope that we can foster and reinforce this special bondage in the technology funds. When designed to join these discussion sessions, I guess two questions are pondering in your mind. Is Hong Kong really an ideal place for conducting R&D? What Hong Kong can offer to me if a UK company starts business in, in Hong Kong? I hope you will then find the answers at the end of my presentations. Innovation is a very risky business. I have to say that, um, but it is very challenging. As stated in the opening remarks by our legislator, Mr. Andrew Leung, the opportunities from the mainland is immense and tremendous. Hong Kong is just a small city with 7 million populations. Just looking at our own size, you will not be interested in Hong Kong. What matters is something beyond Hong Kong, the, big, the bigger picture, the bigger market in mainland. I'm going to tell you that there are tremendous technology opportunities for high-tech companies from all over the world, provided that you start your business in China and Hong Kong. China is a big country with 1.3 billion populations. It is now the second largest economy in the world. Under the five-year plan, the Chinese government is going to invest billions of dollars to procure technology solutions, to upgrade the industry, to move up the value chain, to develop the service sector, to overcome the environmental challenges, and also to improve the economy. There are lots of opportunities and business potential for all of you here. You may ask me, Andrew, if the China market hypothesis is so strong and so present, why don't we move into China direct? Why should we go for Hong Kong? This is possible. If you are a very powerful and resourceful multinational company, you are, you, are, you are so resourceful, you can set up a China strategy, you can set up your regional office in mainland, margin into a large country with 1.3 billion population in uh, 22 provinces and into a totally new world with totally new systems and culture alien to you. But you are just an SME with dozens of people and very limited resources. How can I start with? My sincere advice to you is that you need to stay close to the market in order to become relevant. You need to find a reliable partner who can help you to march into this giant market. I'm glad to tell you that Hong Kong is the place where the SMEs and technology companies can start good business with. Since I'm coming from the government, you may say that, Andrew, you are biased. Let's say what other international bodies have commented on Hong Kong. Hong Kong is the second most innovative city in Asia. We are the most competitive city in, uh, in, in China. Last but not least, the United Nations also found that Hong Kong has become the third largest venue and, and, and region receiving FDI. Trust me, business people like you are very smart people. You are not fools. <coughs> business people coming to Hong Kong, they're putting more and more money in Hong Kong over the years. They come to Hong Kong with very good reasons. That is because of the unique advantages of Hong Kong to be offered under the one country, two system, as well as the dry market in mainland. Let me show you what Hong Kong can offer to technology companies in general. When we are talking about R&D and innovation, talents and people is the core. I'm pleased to tell you that Hong Kong has eight universities. Six of them are doing cutting edges researches on science and engineering. They, they have a lot of world-class professors. Three of our universities have always been rated among the top 50 in the world. Indeed, they are also among the top five in Asia. Therefore, you do not feel such of talents in order to support your R&D work in, in Hong Kong. One third of our graduates 
are coming from the science and engineering stream. They provide good and solid support to your R&D work here. One thing that you may not notice, even the brightest students from the Chinese high schools, they are taking up places in our universities because they are convinced that Hong Kong universities are among the best in the world. And more importantly, they feel that they will be better connected with the rest of the world after graduation in Hong Kong. On legal system, I think uh, under one country, two system, Chinese laws are not practiced in Hong Kong. We are still operating on the common law regime, which is very familiar to you. The Court of Final Appeal is situated in Hong Kong, not in Beijing. I hope it will give a strong peace of mind to all businessmen, including the technology startup. On IP protections, we are still following on the British system. We are taking very rigorous enforcement actions against any infringement on IP rights because we know that IP is the core of asset, is the core, close to the heart of all inventors. On business environment, I'm sure that, that you have heard a lot about the good things about Hong Kong. It is widely a claim that, that Hong Kong is an international financial and service center. We offer first class banking, insurance, logistical, and professional services support to all technology companies, including the very vibrant VC uh, community in Hong Kong. Besides, our taxation system is very simple and lovely. We do not have VAT in Hong Kong. Our salary tax, the maximum rate, is 15%. For corporate tax, it is 16.5%. All R&D expenditure are fully deductible under our tax laws. Therefore, we really encourage innovative ideas coming out from Hong Kong. Last but not the least, the springboard to mainland is very important. Hong Kong is very small with 7 million populations, but we are developing our high-speed rail link out to the rest of China. In five years' time, you can travel throughout Guangdong province, reaching out to more than 100 million populations, 50% more than that of the UK population, just in two hours. It is a huge market just next to Hong Kong. Government's commitments on innovation and technology is beyond doubt. We are fully committed to developing Hong Kong into an innovation hub in the region. The Hong Kong government provides a strong policy support as well as all the supporting necessary measures to enable that the technology companies and startups can flourish in Hong Kong. We provide the ecosystem, a very conducive environment to support your, your research work in Hong Kong. Let me briefly introduce what government has done in the past two or three years in order to support this very important sector. Starting from the infrastructure, I must mention about our Hong Kong Science Park. It is the flagship technological infrastructure in Hong Kong. It was developed 10 years ago. It's now the home for more than 350 companies. They are ranging from multinationals like Philips, Siemens, Newport, to where we start up. The chairman of the Hong Kong Science Park Corporation, Mr. Nick Brook, is going to tell you the very exciting developments of the Science Park. If you are going to find your first landing site in Hong Kong, I can safely and strongly recommend to you that the Hong Kong Science Park will be the landing ground. They have a fabulous uh, uh, um, incubation program, which program provides comprehensive and tailor-made services to help technology startups in Hong Kong and from all over the world. Last year, with the support of our, our legislature, we are going to commit another 400 million pounds to develop the first phase of the Hong Kong Science Park. More new office space is coming onto the street. That's why we are in, 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 in London in this road show. But I can guarantee you that the Hong Kong government will not and can, cannot commit in empty premises. The two phases of the Hong Kong Science Park are nearly fully occupied. It is a testifying fact on the success of the technology infrastructure fellowship of Hong Kong. I would like to mention about our five R&D centers. Five years ago, we set up five R&D centers specializing in different technology areas. These are the centers providing support to companies, universities on uh, applied research. They are aiming to close the gaps or narrow down the gaps between the basic research at universities as well as the downstream research by companies. I'm sure that these R&D centers will render you utmost support 
when you start your business in Hong Kong. They can provide technology support to you, and more importantly, linking up to you with their business partners and also other relevant stakeholders in the mainland and also Hong Kong. There's one fact that some people may overlook. Even though Hong Kong is a service-based economy with 93% of our GDP coming from the service sector, Hong Kong businessmen are very powerful in the Curve Delta region. They are the owners of more than 100,000 factories employing 10 billion workers in Hong Kong. They are providing test back for your new technologies. Funding is very critical. Um, the Hong Kong government provides a lot of funding support to companies, research centers, as well as universities for conducting a private search. For new companies, including the UK companies, provided that you start your business in Hong Kong and you are providing a viable business plan and interesting research proposal to us, you can get a matching grant up to 300,000 uh, 300, pounds from, uh, from the Hong Kong government. And if you are going to collaborate with our research centers and universities on a private research project, the government is prepared to fund half of the research costs. And more lovely, the IP is in your hands. Last but not least, the collaboration with mainland authorities is very important. The Hong Kong government has signed up strategic alliances with our mainland counterparts, namely the Samcheon Municipal Government, the Guangdong Provincial Government. We provide joint support in order to bring added value to companies coming from all over the world. Under the concept of Samcheon Hong Kong Innovation Circle, we are trying to encourage overseas companies to set up their R&D bases in Hong Kong, taking full advantages of our strength in software, and then set up their manufacturing plant in Samcheon. DuPont, the US giant, is an, a typical example of uh, the success story under this concept. Two years ago, they started their first worldwide fin fin photovoltaic R&D center in the Hong Kong Science Park. And then they moved northward, starting their production plant in Samcheon, which is within a one hour drive from the Hong Kong Science Park. And the Samcheon Municipal Government provides a lot of policy support as well as financial support incentive to these overseas companies in order to attract their high tech technologies into the regions. I think I'm saying too much. You are all people interested in this growing business, in technology business. You are in the right times, you are in the right place, you are in the right sector. I just have three takeaways for you. Hong Kong is not only an international financial center, but also an innovation hub. The Hong Kong government offers its comprehensive and strong support to all R&D companies, including those coming from UK. Hong Kong is the gateway to the mainland market. It has the best of the both worlds. I think Andrew actually has done a marvelous sales job already, so I don't think there's much, almost not much for me to say. But anyway, uh, context, if I may, just starting. Uh, what is the Science Park? Well, essentially, it's a major initiative, as you gathered, funded by the Hong Kong government. Um, and our role, and it's driven by the corporation, is to provide the necessary hard and soft infrastructure to support companies, large and small, to achieve their, what I describe as their innovation and technology agendas and also to target opportunities in China and the region. So that is the role of the park, if you like. Um, and I'm pleased to say that we have now become what I would describe as an essential part of the uh, Hong Kong innovation ecosystem. Um, but it does op offer, I think, a major opportunity for companies wishing to settle in, in, in Hong Kong and take advantage of the, uh, the China opportunity. Um, just to uh, show off a little, we're now 10 years old. Um, and very pleased with what we've achieved to date. And I'll talk a little bit about um, what we have achieved to date and then focus primarily on the future. Um, obviously, um, every organization has to be driven by a vision and a mission. Um, and our vision is all about value creation. It's about commercial, commercialization, if you like, um, how we convert innovation, uh, innovative ideas and technology into uh, commercial success. Um, and you see the mission there, it's all about providing the facilities, the services and the environment to nurture ideas and innovate companies and in particular to help Hong Kong establish um, a world class capability in certain uh, selected technologies. Uh, you'll see in a minute that we've decided we can't do all things to all people and we're focusing on certain subsets if you like in terms of taking things forward. Um, We've adopted from the outset a clustering um, uh, structure. Um, again, this is the early decision of the board. These are the technologies where we thought that Hong Kong already had some edge, if you like. 
So the, the first phases of the path were driven by um, IT and uh, electronics um, and precision engineering. The second phase, which I'll show you in a minute, is primarily driven by biotechnology. And the third phase, which we're about to embark on, which Andrew referred to, is uh, uh, largely going to be driven by green technologies. But that in itself is not enough. Those are very wide technologies. Um, and we've already identified uh, some subsets, if you like, where Hong Kong already enjoy, enjoys an edge in terms of either the, having the right technical skills um, or the right knowledge and know-how, etc. Um, RFID is one area, the smart card, where, where uh, we've already clustered quite a large family of companies in that area. And smart card is, is obviously now being used, RFID is being used um, in many sectors of the business acu uh, community, retail, logistics, hospitals. Uh, so a major opportunity, we think, on which we're building. Um, the second area is uh, IC design for um, mobile devices. Um, the hopefully famous red chip that uh, appeared in many uh, telephones and uh, mobile devices uh, was designed in Hong Kong through the Motorola team. That team is still in Hong Kong. Again, we're seeking to build around that cluster of skill sets. Um, the rest of the grouping, uh, and we're going to be talking about green, I know, in the second session, is largely driven by this huge market opportunity that we see in terms of the green family. Um, LED lighting and OLED lighting, as I've been reminded earlier, um, we see as a huge opportunity. 40% of the production of LED lighting is, takes place in, in uh, the uh, Pearl River Delta. So we have a huge production base, and obviously then always looking for um, technology um, development. Uh, thin film PV solar cells, that's the DuPont initiative. Um, again, DuPont having settled in the park, they've clustered around them a whole supply chain of companies who are involved in that particular industry. Um, and then more latterly, we are looking at environmental engineering, and I'll talk a bit about that later, but waste management, energy management, water, um, we see a major opportunity also in terms of electric vehicles, um, sustainable transportation. And then building energy management, uh, Hong Kong being the city as it is, lends itself to be a, a case study, if you like, in terms of building energy management, particularly a lot of the high-rises that we have um, clearly could be managed uh, much more efficiently from a, a, an energy perspective. Um, and finally, uh, you, can't do it, you can't miss or leave behind, if you like, today as well, biotechnology. So again, we have a major thrust um, in terms of biotechnology, looking at the moment anyway in terms of medical devices and um, uh, uh, Chinese medicine. Um, this is a master plan of the park, and I just put this up because I wanted to, to illustrate where we're heading uh, going forward. Uh, you can see this phase one on, on your left, uh, which is finished in 04, phase two, which is the centre portion, finished in 08, and then phase three, which is the phase we're about to embark upon, which is essentially intended to be a showcase for green technologies, and we'll, we'll touch upon that later. Um, the uh, phase three, just in terms of the uh, specification, if you like, um, quite large, 105,000 square metres, six buildings in all. We've uh, reduced the 10 to 6, and 85% of that space will be R&D space, uh, supported by 10% laboratory and 5% support services. Um, this is um, a view, and this is, you wouldn't think this is Hong Kong. It is Hong Kong, I promise you. Uh, that is the Tolo Harbour that you're looking across. The park sits against the, uh, the Tolo Harbour. Um, we created a campus-type environment in phases one and two, and we intend to extend it into phase three. Um, just where we are and where we hope to be, we're already, as Andrew mentioned, 350 companies, 8,200 people. And the interesting uh, thing about that number is uh, we, we believe, well, we know over 60% are either scientists or engineers, so a very highly qualified group of people resident in the park, and you see the significant amount of turnover from, from the companies who are resident in the park. Um, but ultimately, when we finish phase three, we hope to be 500 companies and about 12,000 people. So it's all about building, as far as I'm concerned, it's all about building community, not just building um, buildings. Um, this is the current mix of the 340, uh, 350, 46 companies. You see the majority are in the electronics and, and IT area. That's a function of obviously history, but we're already building up um, our green tech and our biotech and our precision engineering family. Um, we, in terms of the mix, and I'll talk a little about incubation in a minute, because we pride ourselves on the quality of our soft offer. Anybody can build the buildings, in my, in my view, but it's the quality of the soft offer, and incubation is one of our soft, uh, one part of our soft offer. 
But in terms of our incubatees, the bulk are local companies, although there are um, a few from overseas. But in terms of our partner companies, because we refer to them as partners, because we regard it as much more of a landlord-tenant relationship, um, about 40% are from overseas and 60% are local. Um, how do we support? Well, obviously we support with world class, what we describe as world class infrastructure, the hard side, uh, if you like. Um, and then, as I mentioned, the community side, clearly um, if, you're, if we're going to have a community of 12,000 people, um, very intelligent people, then they're going to need supporting. Uh, and we have um, a major, obviously, F&B offer. We have, uh, obviously, club facilities, etc., uh, to create, create an environment where people want to stay and work in the park. Um, back to the soft, if I may. Um, we pride ourselves, as I said, in the quality of the soft offer. Um, most of our companies, and, and, and this is what message I wanted to get across, are SMEs. The family is largely made up of SMEs. And many of these SMEs cannot afford uh, uh, the equipment that they need, or can't, have, can't get access to it, or don't necessarily have the skills to, uh, to use it. So what we've done is to, to create um, a whole series of shared laboratory facilities. We have in total 10 shared laboratories to support the different um, uh, technology clusters that you saw earlier. Um, and this is, this is a very well used uh, series of facilities, 24 times 7 type facilities available at any time. Uh, met, uh, partner companies in the park at first call, but companies from outside also can use them. And it, it's own, we only charge on a cost recovery basis, and we do not try and recover the, the capital cost, it's just the, uh, the running cost, if you like. Um, in terms of the, the total service offer, if I, I'll put up the whole fan, if I may, um, we have a whole myriad, if you like, of, 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 ser of services that we provide to support companies at different stages of their development, because we have from startups through to SMEs through to large multinationals. Um, so the laboratories you'll see at the top end of the fan, um, a lot of uh, time spent with small companies on mentoring. Um, you, we perform a major angel um, VC financing function. Uh, we help them a lot to market and promote their products. Um, and we build a lot of inter-park collaboration. There are many examples of companies within the park coming together uh, and working together um, without any, any particular um, action on our part. It just happens spontaneously. Um, the incubation program I mentioned, and this could be appropriate to uh, a number of you in the room, and indeed we have several companies from the UK in our incubation program. Um, it's a, a, up to a four-year program. If you're a design company, it's two. If you're a more standard uh, form of uh, uh, technology, if you like, it's three. And if, it's, uh, if you're um, bio, it's four. Uh, and we provide... Um, this, this platform, if you like, financial support, but also business support uh, in terms of the marketing plans, business plans, um, helping with their IP, etc. Um, and to date, you'll see here, we've graduated nearly 300 companies, and 78% are still in business. Now, that is a very high percentage. Um, many of them are still in the park, which is, which is good news. And we've also, you see, raised um, about 700 million, about 55 million pounds, uh, help them raise, sorry, uh, 55 million pounds in angel and venture capital. We regard that as a ma major responsibility, acting as the middleman, if you like. And we've helped them uh, gain a number of awards and uh, a whole range of uh, uh, IP. One example, this is ReadySem. This is a UK-based company um, in the integrated circuits um, uh, arena. They came to the park about 18 months ago with help of Invest Hong Kong. Uh, they've now expanded from the two founders who were running the company initially to 15 members. And they are looking very seriously at the, uh, the China opportunity. And here's a statement from the, uh, the owner, or one of the owners of uh, ReadySem. Very simple set up a business here. The setup cost was low. Particularly impressed by how fast things move here. Within three months, we had developed and manufactured our first prototype. And from there, the business has grown very quickly. Um, we're talking, about, we're talking today, obviously, about synergies. And um, I talk often about what I describe as the combined offer. Um, this is taking advantage of what you heard this morning, the, the one country, two systems scenario, um, and accessing uh, clearly the, uh, the skills, not only of Hong Kong, but also the, the advantages of, of the Pearl River Delta. Um, and this is what I describe as the Hong Kong PRD model. Um, it's taking advantage of the strength of both places. Um, Pearl River Delta, obviously cheap land, uh, uh, access to uh, labour, um, uh, the, uh, a 
ability, if you like, to uh, um, access the opportunities in the five-year plan. And then and on the Hong Kong side, you've got all the things that we've talked about earlier, the strong IP, marketing expertise, dynamic financial sector, educated and skilled labor force, uh, very important. Um, uh, many Ch young Chinese uh, who've been educated offshore want to come back, very happy to settle in Hong Kong and work in Hong Kong. They're less happy by being posted to mainland China. So the fact that you know, there are, there's a ready pool of people willing to work and stay in Hong Kong, I think, is important. Um, uh, we can help you. We can help you access the, the, what I could describe as the, uh, the combined offer. We can obviously help you with the part, but with our connections into China, we can help you access business opportunities, we can help you access partners, and we can help you generally um, establish um, uh, a robust business, if you like, which takes advantage of the two, uh, two systems. Um, I wanted just to show a quick couple of examples about companies which are taking advantage of the, the combined offer, if you like. This is a, uh, a spin-off from Imperial College, Sinixa, which has settled in the Science Park, um, uh, and they already uh, developed their research to a major degree, but they are also now um, uh, building up a, a, a production capability in, in the Pearl River Delta, and they've received uh, some major, major awards. Um, another example of how we operate on a cross-border basis, DuPont, um, uh, settled in the park with their um, global, va uh, global uh, um, research facility, but wanted production, wanted the access to market. So we access, we help them with, with Shenzhen, in Shenzhen to find the site and also to get them access to market. And more interestingly, um, not time today, but um, a lot of things, a lot of times I talk about reverse flows, because this I think is the story of the next five to 10 years. Inward flows are important, but outward flows are going to be equally important. This is a Chinese company looking to put its footprint first in Hong Kong, but then around uh, Europe and around America. Um, we can work with you in, in a, in a two-way basis, I think. Um, and this is an example of, I think, what's going to happen more often in the future. And then finally, Philips, obviously, an early settler in our park, one of our major partners, 1,200 staff now in the park, um, and it's their Asia-Pacific regional headquarters. And this is the final message, if I may. Um, we believe we're the gateway uh, to the mainland and to the Asian markets. Um, we provide that platform, but we also provide you with that access to southern China, which I think is very important. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, all, during the next 15 minutes, I would like to share with you, through the eyes of a local R&D center, how we can work with overseas companies uh, to conduct R&D and uh, commercialize their product in Hong Kong and also mainland China. Uh, so um, I'm going to say, uh, say a few words about how the Hong Kong Applied Science and Technology Research Institute, uh, acronym is S3, was formed. Uh, and uh, I'll give an overview of the S3 operations and then give you some example of the research projects in the five areas. Uh, the, the early guiding forces uh, of the Science Park and Estuary uh, was uh, due to the work of the late Professor Tin Chang Lin, the Chancellor of UC Berkeley, uh, around the 1998 to 1999. So he wrote a report uh, uh, which was accepted by the then Hong Kong government. At the same time, uh, there was the Professor Charles Kao, the uh, Nobel Prize winner of 2009. At that time, he was the Vice Chancellor of the University, so he did quite a bit of work uh, in the planning and the activities uh, uh, in Hong Kong. And uh, eventually, then he stimulated the creation of several uh, leading uh, uh, optical communications and also the optical companies uh, in Science Park uh, and uh, the PRD region. Uh, so the report of Professor Tin was to. Uh, Hong Kong need to fill the gap of the midstream R&D capability in technology infrastructure uh, because Hong Kong has very good uh, basic research uh, in the eight universities, but then we need to do more work in the uh, midstream and downstream side. Uh, and the Hong Kong government announced in the 1998 policy address to establish an applied science and research uh, institute to support uh, the midstream research. Uh, and the recommendation also calls for the construction of the science park. 
and the establishment of uh, 400 million pounds of the Innovation and Technology Fund, which Andrew talked about. Uh, in the year 2006, the Hong Kong government further expanded the R&D centers, uh, creating five centers, uh, consists of the uh, Information and Communication Technology, uh, which is mainly S3, and then the textile and clothing, nanotech, automobile parts, and logistics and supply chain. Uh, and uh, uh, Professor uh, Ga Ming is going to talk about the nanotech, so I, I will focus in the uh, information and communication technologies. Uh, so uh, after 10 years, uh, in April 2010, we celebrated the 10th anniversary. So, so S3 grew from the beginning of uh, three people in the Chim Sha Chui area to 600 people in the Science Park. Uh, so this is a celebration. I want to say a few words about the uh, people at the celebration. The center is the Financial Secretary, Mr. John Zhang. On the left is the former Secretary of Commerce and Economics. Uh, the second from the left is uh, uh, Dr. Patrick Wen, is the chairman of S3. Uh, incidentally, uh, Dr. Wen uh, runs the uh, largest uh, supplier of a miniature motor uh, in Hong Kong, and his headquarters is based in Science Park. Uh, and also the second from the right is the Mr. Liu Yingli of uh, Shenzhen, uh, and he was instrumental uh, in establishing the Hong Kong Shenzhen Circle of Collaboration, which uh, stimulated a lot of uh, multinational companies in this, that area. Um, uh, the focus of S3 is in the uh, five areas. The communication technologies, the enterprise and consumer electronics, integrated circuits, material and packaging, and uh, we just started a new group, uh, biomedical electronics. Uh, here's the statistic in a glance. Um, uh, right now, we have 620 uh, uh, people, uh, 540 uh, research staffs, including interns from universities, and 80 people doing administration. Our budget is uh, about 36 million pounds. Uh, 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 the breakdown in R&D and the recurrent is in the next line. Uh, for the patents, in the last financial year, uh, we, were, we were awarded 65 uh, patents. Uh, mainly in the U.S. and the mainland China and also in Europe. Uh, we accumulated 160, 176 patents uh, since uh, inception. Technology transfer over the last five years since 2006, we completed 320 technology transfers right now at the average of 100 uh, uh, per year. Um, uh, for each technology transfer, we have a contract. Uh, we must work with at least one industry partners for every project we have taken. And quite often, we work with several uh, partners at the same time. Uh, one measure of success is a spin-off. We have completed four spin-offs so far, and several are underway. So one uh, spin-off was the uh, optical communication company, as I mentioned earlier, started out with uh, 14 people in 2005, and now grew to 2,000 people. Uh, both in the Shenzhen and in uh, uh, the Science Park. He, here's an overview of Science Park's complement. What Nick showed you, uh, the 600 people, we divide ourselves into three uh, buildings. Uh, uh, each building is, uh, holds uh, uh, 200 people, and you, say, you can see the empty land on the right side is the space for the uh, phase three, as uh, Nick uh, just mentioned. And you can see the broad walk along the waterfront, and. As uh, Nick said, it doesn't look like Hong Kong. Uh, so this is a very attractive area, uh, area for, to conduct R&D uh, and innovative activities. The business model, I would like to elaborate on what uh, uh, Mr. Andrew Lai mentions. Uh, we work with people around the world uh, using three different models. The first model is the non-exclusive licensing, uh, where the, our industry partners only contributed 10% of the funds and then the Hong Kong government contributed the rest in 90%. So in this case, uh, the partners has a right to license the technology. They don't own the technology. And if the partner wants to own the technology, then they pay a little bit more, like the, they pay half, uh, and the government paid the other half. Then they own all the foreground IP. And then I even calculated that you know, the 10% rebate and so forth. So actually, the, the the overseas companies, they only have to pay probably one third of the cost of doing research 
And then essentially the rest two thirds is uh, uh, provided by the government. And of course, as uh, some uh, companies, uh, they, don't, they don't really want to deal with the government, so they, they contribute 100% uh, of the resources. And there are quite a few companies uh, doing this for, uh, from overseas. So these are the business models uh, we are doing. Uh, this is an, give you an example of the kind of uh, yeah, uh, business uh, partners uh, we accumulate, as you can see from the logo. Uh, so uh, they have a lot of local company, UK and uh, US and, and other countries uh, all over the world. Uh, for the rest of the time, I'm going to give you a flavor of the uh, five research areas that we are doing. Uh, and then uh, to try to illustrate how overseas com companies can work in Hong Kong. Uh, in the, for the communication uh, technology, our thrust is in the fourth generation wireless technologies. It's the one generation beyond the 3G that everybody is using. Uh, the, the jargon TDLTE is the Chinese standard. Uh, in, uh, in Hong Kong, because we address the mainland market, so the Chinese uh, standards is very important. So the top, uh, the top half of, uh, of the di uh, diagram shows so what we are doing uh, in the 4G technology. Uh, we conducted trade shows uh, in Geneva, the ITU, the middle one. On the right side is the Barcelona, the NU wireless uh, communication technologies. So the gentleman on the right uh, stand, uh, standing in the middle is uh, Mr. Wang Jianzhou, the chairman of China Mobile. China Mobile is the biggest uh, uh, telecom company in the world with 600 uh, million subscribers. So, so you can see that the, the potential if they build the network over China, is a, the potential is enormous. That they need hundreds of companies to supply the technology to build such a network. And uh, we are very glad to, see, to say that uh, Mr. Wang is one of our closest uh, partners. Uh, the bottom part uh, is related to UK. Uh, we have, an, uh, among the hundreds of uh, suppliers that I mentioned, there's uh, one company called Pickle Chip. It's uh, based in Bath, uh, UK. Uh, is uh, also one of our close partners. So we work with them uh, to, to do quite a few trade shows in uh, Barcelona, the Mobile World Congress in 2009 and 2010. So we started with a uh, small collaboration and then the collaboration is uh, building up to bigger and bigger uh, uh, size. Uh, so to, to, uh, to give you, a, we, we, we were the leader of the 4G wireless technologies. Uh, so we were uh, selected to demonstrate technology in the Shanghai Expo in 2010, May 1st. Uh, so we demonstrate technology uh, to the left, the diagram on the left is the Ministry of uh, Information in China, Mr. Li. And on the right side, we demonstrated the technology to the lady, uh, Ms. Janet Wong, is the Commissioner of uh, Innovation, Innovation Technology Commissioner in Hong Kong. So, so that's the e ecosystem. And how about our partners? Uh, the Pickle Chip, the company uh, in Bath, uh, UK. Last week, uh, Pickle Chip and S3 uh, make a uh, press release announcing the availability of the first commercial grade LTE small shell reference design, the chips and the uh, uh, reference design, uh, make it generally available so, uh, uh, throughout the world. So, uh, so we were very proud of this. And the photo at the bottom is uh, Mr. Nigel Toon, the CEO of uh, Pickle Chip. Uh, I believe uh, uh, was a, uh, a VP of engineering of Pickle Chip is here, Mr. Per uh, David Perlis. Uh, are you there? Oh, uh, Dave, thanks. Uh, uh, Any one of you interested in to learn more how a UK company can work with Astrid, please contact David after the meeting. <laughs> uh, so uh, we are very happy about the collaboration. Uh, next, I want to say a few words about consumer and enterprise electronics. Uh, uh, here are two, uh, okay, I, I think I can finish in three minutes. <laughs> uh, the, uh, for the consumer electronics, uh, we focus on two projects. Uh, the first one is the e-learning solution. It's um, mainly a software system, the learning management uh, uh, system platform. Is uh, we work with the education bureau, uh, it's driven by the teachers. Uh, so we work with the Education Institute and the teachers is driving the design of the system is to provide the online information, personal learning, 
parent-child interaction and the group activities. And the idea is to have a neutral platform so that the publishing companies can safely put their, uh, their IP on the platform. So the two of the leading companies, uh, Oxford University Press and Cambridge uh, Press, and uh, so the leading uh, publishers uh, in UK. Uh, so in April this year, we launched uh, our uh, pet, uh, uh, so the, the tablet uh, for this kind of project is, is uh, one aspect of the platform. Uh, so uh, we have 30 more schools with uh, more than 1,000 students uh, using the, the technology. And of course, we don't just eye the market in Hong Kong. We will not look at the China market and the rest of the world. In China, there are 200 million students. Uh, the second project in this area is the smart building and uh, energy management. Uh, as uh, uh, Nick mentioned that, uh, so again, it's a uh, combination of uh, uh, sensors and the uh, software to control the lighting, the uh, uh, VAC and the elevator uh, uh, to, to save energy, to analyze the performance and the control mechanism. There were other uh, uh, speakers will address this in more detail uh, later this afternoon. Uh, in the material and packaging technologies, um, uh, we uh, did a lot of work in the LED area. We accumulated uh, almost 100 patents, and then we licensed our technology throughout China, the, the street lamp from the uh, North China all the way uh, to Hong Kong and the light bulbs, and, uh, and also we work with the different government bureaus uh, in order to save energy. Uh, in the government buildings. Uh, to, um, again, this is just an example of how overseas companies can establish their presence in Hong Kong. Uh, uh, this is a signing ceremony of a company in Maryland. Uh, Maryland um, uh, uh, licensed our patents and then uh, took some of the people, set up a new company in Science Park uh, in last October, and then uh, the next, what they did is that they set up a manufacturing plant in Shenzhen and a much bigger plant in Chengdu uh, or Sichuan of uh, more than 500 people. So after six months coming to Hong Kong, they are already shipping the product to the customer. So, so I believe all the UK companies can follow the example of this uh, Maryland company. Uh, integrated circuit design, uh, I'm going to finish up. <laughs> so, uh, no, so, uh, uh, yeah, in this area, we attracted a lot of Silicon Valley companies uh, to come to the science park to set up the company and then uh, uh, hire local people, the designers, and ship products. So we already have uh, several people from Stanford University in Berkeley, UC Berkeley, to set up uh, uh, companies in Hong Kong. I want to mention that one of our uh, most important license, uh, um, licensing activity is from a company in Cambridge, the famous ARM company. And as you know, licensing a copy of ARM is very expensive, uh, hundreds of million pounds. But uh, nonetheless, it's essential uh, to uh, we have the license from the UK company and use it as a platform for us to build on the other products. Uh, so, uh, and so we are actually pushing the envelope doing 100 gigabit uh, Ethernet. So finally is the uh, telehealth solution. Uh, in uh, biomedical uh, electronics. Uh, so uh, uh, Anthony Tang is going to talk about this, so I'm going to uh, elaborate uh, it in uh, great detail. Uh, in conclusion, uh, uh, through the last uh, 10 to 11 years of experience, uh, we learned how to work with uh, companies around the world uh, to set up uh, uh, R&D and production center in Hong Kong, especially in Science Park, and then uh, moving, uh, try to commercialize uh, the products into first the Pearl River Delta and the rest of the China. And we look forward to work uh, with all the UK or the uh, other European companies uh, going forward. Thank you. This is the topic I'm going to talk about today. Now, for the global technology marketplace, I will focus on what NAMI will do for you. Now, in case you do not know what NAMI is, it stands for Nanotechnology and Advanced Materials Institute. For my friend over there who knows Putonghua, NAMI in Chinese means nano. 
Okay, so our goal is to serve Hong Kong and mainland industries in technology development and commercialization. Now for those who are not a Hong Kong company, don't worry, you can become a Hong Kong company in one week. <laughs> so uh, I count you in, not, not, no matter what. In one day, okay, correction, in one day. Now, so uh, as you may know that uh, Hong Kong followed the following strategy. Number one, we would, be, we would like to be very good in education. That we started about 20 years ago. And uh, now, there's no denying, no argument that the Hong Kong universities are world-class universities. So the next step for us to do is to fill the gap between fundamental research and commercial production. How do we do, how do, we do it? We do it by doing applied research and pilot scale testing. And that is what we do in an R&D center. Now, this picture will show you what we try to do. Uh, on, the, uh, on the top, we have investors looking for new products and know-how. Now, let's don't understate this statement. Uh, as pointed out that in Hong Kong, well, in the 80s, uh, we had many, many companies engaging in OEM. So, well, we took advantage of the relatively in inexpensive labor in mainland China. But today, the world has changed. So uh, now, there's a great need for technology upgrading. And that is what we try to do. But we cannot look back. In addition to the uh, local companies, we also try to attract the, T, uh, the TMCs and big corporations for the reason that they will come not only with their uh, financial resources, but also the technical know-how. We believe that's the, really the way to move up very quickly in the technology chain. Now, to the, uh, to the uh, uh, lower right-hand corner, then we have universities, overseas institutions. I, I emphasize overseas institutions. In that, Hong Kong is an international city. So we are open to all people to come to work with us. And NAMI will serve as the link, linking these two, uh, uh, two groups together. So in a way, what we, this is what we do. We provide the technology that we need and the market and technology intelligence. So we no longer just do technology. Hong Kong is a great financial center. So what we try to do is to really put the business and technology development together. So we have government funding. As pointed out, I do not have to repeat myself. But one thing I definitely have to repeat nonetheless is that you pay $1, the government pays $1, you own the IP. I travel around the world. I've never seen an another economy that would offer you the IP by paying 50% of the total project cost. Now, so uh, in terms of, uh, we, in Hong Kong, uh, actually there are many, in addition to the VC community, there are many companies with great financial resources. So uh, if you do need <coughs> financing, uh, the, uh, all our uh, government agencies and NAMI would be delighted to help. So this is the key, Hong being the international city, we have the worldwide network from the US to Europe, UK, everywhere. And that is a really big advantage. Now, to, uh, to underscore what I just said, so we can divide our people into two groups. Now, you may not be a company, you may be just an academic, or you may be an inventor with idea. So the way we do it is that on my left, what you see is what we call technical affiliates. We have people in Hong Kong who have expertise in different areas, for example, solar energy and construction materials. But we have also have collaboration with Berkeley, Stanford, and many other universities. That is the technical side. On the business side, we have all the trade associations in Hong Kong working with us. Take FMM as an example, do you know? Within the FMM, they have 2,000 member companies. You talk to any member company, 
they have another 5,000, 10,000 workers within one company. So you can see, now we are moving from the labor in in intensive industries to really high tech uh, industries as demanded by the central government. And that's the direction we are heading. So in addition, we have, uh, for example, VC2 is a, um, uh, is a uh, venture capital uh, company we work with. So in addition to now, you may have a good idea. Not everyone is a company with a lot of money. So if you have, you have, an, you, you have an idea, then that will guide you through to talk to those people, to get the funding that we need in order to go forward. So in essence, we would like to put everything together in a, a complete package. If we cannot do it within the army, what do we do? Then we will send you off to Invest Hong Kong, to TTC, to all our friends in, uh, in Hong Kong, to put the whole package for, for, uh, for you in, 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 as a whole to go forward. Now, so NAMI is, uh, well, uh, unlike S3, uh, we are totally owned by the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. That is to my right. And that is where our head headquarter headquarters is. And I have to emphasize this, that uh, it's not only the top five, but we are ranked number one in Asia, much ahead of uh, Tokyo University and other universities. So I have to underscore that point, since I'm also a professor there. And um, <laughs> so uh, if you look at my left, so we speak that uh, we, are, we are doing large scale, pilot scale uh, testing. So we have to work with, and this is great facility in the science uh, park now. So we have uh, big projects that, are, that would occupy quite a bit of space, and we are still expanding in this regard. Now, so with that, I'd like to uh, go briefly into the five uh, areas that we work in. Now, as pointed out by Alan, don't ask me what, what Nano is. Uh, I have tried to explain this to many people, and I failed. So what I learned is, rather than talking about nano technology and advanced materials, maybe it's easier to look at where these technologies are applied. So one is the uh, energy sustainability. We work on battery, a huge project that we are now working on to look at capful materials. Well, talking about DuPont, I have to point out, by working with uh, our organizations, that's a big advantage because the government is behind it. So what you see is the, uh, the hospital in uh, Hong Kong. So we, the government helps to put the solar panel on top of the hospital. So you can see the government policies behind it to help the company to move forward. When you have, we have real, a new product, then we put it to use with funding from the government. So that is what we try to do now. But we are not limited to uh, fin film silicon. We also look at second generation solar energy, the so-called CITS. I will not dwell uh, into it. But also the third generation organic PV. So sooner or later, we believe the fin film silicon will run its course. So we look ahead as an R&D center to look at the third generation solar energy in order to because this is still wide open, despite all the competition from U of Cambridge, and we do it in our own way. But do you see, even though we are doing materials, but always materials and processing, they come hand in hand. Once you have the material, you still have to shape the material into a product that you can use. So we look at all this mid-scale uh, processing in Science Park because they do provide us with the laboratories and the space that we need. Now, uh, you may not know, but I can use this phone as an example, right? So uh, in, North, in Southern China, well, if you had only an iPad, do you know where it is being made? You can guess, right? Apple, where do they make the, uh, the iPad? So uh, there is a great need of uh, materials, advanced materials for solid state lighting and display and for uh, uh, so 
at, uh, for example, take the LED. LED, the chip itself, doesn't fail. It, lo it lasts forever. The reason that it would fail is that is the other components uh, co uh, connected to the LED chip. So we look at all these materials as a view of you know, improving the lifetime. Now, talking about the new materials, thanks for, for, uh, to my friend here, we also have Swedish companies working with us from all over the world, from, from around the world. Now, uh, for the future of environmental technology, we work on water, air, and solid state product. I'm not going to get into all the details, but I want to point out one thing that we have to admit. China is still improving. Uh, we are a developing country, and we have a long way to go. So, in a way, we are not short of wastewater. To uh, give you an example, okay, that I work with the dyeing industry in, uh, in, in mainland China. The amount of wastewater they produce a year is equal to the total consumption of, of 7 million people in Hong Kong, 2 billion tons altogether uh, annually. That much water we are talking about. And now, mainland China now is talking about recycling 70% of the wastewater. Think about the enormous uh, business opportunity uh, for upgrading. OK, uh, these are the construction materials. There are many of them. And even by Hong, in Hong Kong by itself, we have these 10 mega projects that we can use advanced uh, construction materials. <coughs> and healthcare with the aging. Um, so these are the, all these business opportunities are right, uh, are right in front of us. So uh, I would uh, end with probably a minute left. Uh, and uh, I don't think that I did a conclu uh, conclusion remarks because I think with everything said and done, uh, it's clear that we do offer a lot in Hong Kong. But I would like to leave you with a beautiful picture of my university, the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, the number one university in Asia.